In the Tariq of Makrezi in the year 600, a man buried his wife. And by mistake, his handkerchief, which had money inside it, fell inside the grave. Now he's gone home, realizing that the handkerchief is inside the grave. He takes one of the local scholars to dig up the grave. Now the scholar standing at the corner of the grave, and this guy is dig, uh, is dig up the grave. What, does he, what did he see on that day? He saw his wife is sitting inside the grave, and her hair are tied to her feet. So what he does is interfere in the akhirah. And he begins to, tries to untie the hair. Trying, trying, he's unable to do so. How is he going to be able to make a difference in the akhirah? But he doesn't refrain. He continues to do so. And what does the scholar witness? Down he goes, and down his wife goes, and there is not a sign of them. And he remains unconscious for one day and one night. When he gains conscience and relates it to the Khalif, the Amir, he in turn wrote to the great scholar of Islam who Ali was at the time, the great master of a hadith, Muhaddis, Taqiyuddin ibn Daqiq al Eid, get this as what, what's been witnessed in our land. So the great master of hadith wrote back that this is a reminder. Simple. This is a reminder for people like you and me. Okay, a BB time here. You know, even now you've got time. Even now you can set the record. You know, just turn to Allah, Allah will embrace. It doesn't have to be like this. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now and then reveals this. Hawarith ibn Rabab was at the time of Umar. He was passing through a place called Athaba. And all of a sudden out of a grave he saw a man come out. His head was on fire and his face was on fire. And he was tied in chains. And he was begging for water. Iskini, iskini. He says, all of a sudden, another guy came out from the grave following him, saying, don't give the kafir anything, don't give the kafir anything. He drug, grabbed him by his chains and dragged him back inside the grave again. Now obviously, Hawarith ibn Rabah was terrified and so was the Sheikh He says, I lost total control till I got to a place called Ir Irkul Zabiyah. That's where I read my Maghrib and Isha and I head straight away to Medina al Manawara to the great Umri Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and I related to him this, itness, uh, this incident which I witnessed. He says, Umri Farooq looked into this and it turned out that this man died in the days of ignorance. He belonged to the tribe of Banu Ghifar. And the sin that he would commit was, he did not fulfill the rights of his guests. Abdullah bin Umar also witnessed a similar incident at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he, when he related to the Messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that was the enemy of Allah, Abu Jahl. And Allah is punishing him in this manner right till the day of judgment. Now my young friends, just before I conclude, very quickly, let's, let, let us just look at very briefly some of the causes of the punishment inside the grave. It doesn't have to be like this, like I said. Now, as we've seen from the hadith, there are many, many different reasons as to why a person will be punished. But in general, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said hadith of Bayhaqi on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna adhab al qabr min thalatha, that in general, the punishment of the grave is as a result of three things, three sins. First, min al ghiba. Second, wal bawl. I mean, uh, second was wal namima. And the third was wal bawl, fa iyyakum wa dhalik. Backbiting, ghiba. Secondly, slandering, I mean, carrying tails. And thirdly, negligence with, re with regards to drops of urine. In the hadith which Imam Bukhari and Muslim have narrated in the Sa'i on the authority of an Abbas. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi was passing by uh, once two graves. And the people in the grave were receiving punishment. So Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi said to the Sahaba that these people are being punished. But don't think they're being punished as a result of something major. No. And then Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi informed them that one of them, he would carry tails. And the second one was negligent with regards to drops of urine. And then Rasulullah asked for a, a fresh palm, he split it into two, and then he planted one on each grave. So the Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, why did you do this? Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained that it's so possible that the punishment will be lightened as long as these fresh palms don't become dry. <coughs> My young friends, who from amongst us to some degree doesn't commit these sins. Especially the first two, ghiba 
bug biting and carrying tails, especially riba, my friends. You know, this sin rare will you find in any person that to some degree doesn't commit this sin. Even the learned, bug biting people. Now that we know the consequence of this, we need to refrain. And with regards to you know the, the drops of urine, we need to perform istibra. Now, what istibra is? Well, I'm going to leave it in your good hands, inshallah, to address this. But basically, just to sum it up in a nutshell, that we need to make sure that once we've done istanja, that after having done istanja, we need to be sure that no drops of urine come out and pollute our clothes or our bodies. Now, those that don't perform istibra, without you even knowing, my young friends, you'll be committing the sin. There is no way on God's earth, in general, if you're not doing istibra, that you're not committing the sin. And you won't even know it. You know, sometimes one little drop will come out and you won't even realize. You know, you won't even realize. That, that's all of us included, me included. You won't realize. So this is why it's important that is, uh, uh, you know, once we do istanja, we do istibra. And hopefully, inshallah, Mawlana uh, will shed light on this uh, in a Juma or some fit class. Things that you can do that which will help and save you from the punishment of the grave. And this is something that every one of us can do. And you know, if at least one person acts upon this, then uh, you know what? It's been a good day for me. And you know, even if you don't, it's still a good day. Why? Hopefully Allah will accept. And I'm going to bank the difference in the Akhirah. This is what you call banking the difference, guys. You want to be a billionaire? Then these are the types of accounts that you need to open. Not ones in Swiss accounts, yard. And you just kid yourself that you're a big billionaire. Oh my God, how foolish. How foolish can you get? You open these accounts in the Swiss accounts and you have these billions. Only for them to freeze. <laughs> you know, if this human cannot, I mean, if it doesn't click after this, then when is it going to click? Open these type of accounts and I swear by Allah, Allah will never freeze any one of them. Your account will never be frozen. But okay, you know, you'll be shocked that you in, your, in your, in your mind, you only put a million pound in there. You know, on the day of judgment, I mean, I, I only know the last word is zillion. I don't know anything beyond that. Yeah, but you know what? Zillion times a zillion times a zillion to the last number, whatever it may be, if there's one. Yeah, this is what you will find. This is the return that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. It doesn't give you 1% or 2%. And this is the type of account that you want to open with Allah. Do whatever good you can. Invest here, invest there. You will not be disappointed.